So this is our first serious game dev attempt. A roguelike called Versifer's Fungeon. It's a dungeon crawler where you can be a goose knight. Every character has a unique dash and you can choose a spell. Then you go and collect magical items and get stronger with each one. We just completed the 100 days of game dev challenge on Twitter. And while it was quite a lot of work, it brought us ahead a lot. In this video we will show you how our game went from this to this. When we started the challenge on November 1st, 2021, our game had a single screen. The player was just out there floating in space and everything is neon. And man did the visual effects look rough. You see these large shapes around all characters? They were there to communicate hurt boxes. We removed them and made the sprites much larger. Also, even though we liked the health bars visually, we decided to get rid of the HUD completely and encoded it into the sprites. We needed a proper background. So in the first few days we added a dungeon background and things got a lot clearer. We finished up an internal version at this time, so we added a title screen, an options menu and a short tutorial. We also added an extremely hard difficulty option and it was brutal. We also see some more work on the background with vines and more shading. And this is what we gave people to play. At this point we still wanted to finish the public demo in January 2022. Spoiler. We did not finish the demo in January. Overall the feedback we got for the internal demo version was very positive. But people were not really getting a sense of progress within a run. So we decided we could not do the public demo with only a single room. That just does not convey what we have in mind for the game. So what if we just extend the dungeon? Should we do rooms like in the Binding of Isaac? Or wider spaces? How could we get a player to fight the monsters and not just run from them? How would we prevent having to backtrack? And how would we manage the camera? Do we need multiple floors? We tried out different options and ended up with automatic scrolling at different speeds. And of course we now need procedural generation for the dungeon. What we do is define modules that consist of a few timer players and objects. And we then chain those together randomly. Sounds easier than it is. When do you need to add another module? When do you delete a past room? How do you deal with the transitions between modules? For example, this is what happens when you instantiate the room a bit too often. We really liked the scrolling prototype and worked through some bugs and we decided to keep it. Some things went easier than expected. Changing speed was quite easy using visibility notifiers. We also used these to define enemy spawn points. They just needed to stay inside bounds, which was not so easy. You see, there were quite a few problems. Once that was fixed, we started to implement consumable pickups and some ground hazards, like spikes and this conveyor belt. The ideas were flowing like crazy. We added a feed pedestal to collect your dash and with a scrolling dungeon, we finally had the option to add water. It started out a bit flat, but after we added some waves and the ability to submerge, it felt really nice. We simply map out a placeholder and at runtime areas are placed that detect characters. They report that to the character who calculates the overlap of a rect at its feet. The higher the overlap, the deeper the character is submerged. Just tell that to a shader and it does the magic. The water also applies a slope and you can even electrify it. We wanted to use elemental interactions with the environment. So what smell you have affects your experience in the dungeon even more. Based on this we could make some dungeon layouts. For example this one with spikes and wall noses. Yeah, we added wall noses. They shoot water drops at you. We also did some work on the shading of the dungeon tiles and we added lava. We got rid of even more of the HUD by removing the player health bar as well. It still is shown on the sprite and the screen wide vignette. And here comes the other big reason for the demo delay. We decided to add items. They always were essential for the game's concept, but we wanted something playable first. But after the first feedback, we saw that we needed them to get the concept across. So we added them. We had a powerful trigger effect system and a lot of stats already implemented. So the coding side of things was smooth sailing. But of course we needed designs, icons and flavor texts. The first set included 9 items. My favorite one are the plastic vampire fangs. We wanted to give the game more of an RPG feeling. So we had the idea to add those typical RPG attributes like strength, agility and intelligence. All the other stats are based on these primary stats. We soon added orbs that give you primary stat increments. Oh, and the name giving Fursifer is now actually part of the game. He sits there and talks to you at the start of a run and comments on the items you find. We made an early draft for the character selection. You can choose from 4 spells per character on the right. These fake 3D shards make it look much more magical. It's a particle system with a vertex shader and a fragment shader. And here we use the fake 3D shader for a depth transition. 
This was a bit of work, but it's actually easier than it looks. The shards are polygons, and we take a screenshot at the moment of death that we use as the texture. At this point we could finally do some playtesting, and we realized our enemies were not suited for these new circumstances. The snake just slivers to the left, into the spikes, and dies. Every time. Also, we added a few early game enemies to teach the player basic mechanics. The bomb bee explodes when it bounces against anything. You can use it to deal damage. And this little mushroom guy does absolutely nothing, but it gives the player space to play around. We reworked the frog because it was too small and had a boring pattern. Now it alternates between jumping and shooting water drops. And we added destructible jars that drop currency. Also, you can extinguish lava with water spells now. We added burnable bushes. They don't hurt you, but they hurt the enemies. Here we gave the ground more perspective and added torches. And suddenly everything felt more polished. Firebolt got an overhaul. Brrr. The casting effect is also more refined now. We gave the bouncy trails an overhaul and added numbers for crits and armor breaks. Another big thing are the additional poses. Most enemies now have a casting pose and a hurt pose. This gives them more character and communicates their state much better. And the playable characters got directions and an idle pose. The dark bunny, an early to mid game enemy, is now a dynamite bunny. The explosion after death just makes more sense now. You can also just place the dynamite as a hazard in the dungeon. We added rooms where you can choose an item, add some tooltips. Then we redid the tooltips so they look nicer. Even with color text, we also added 10 more items. And suddenly the 100 days were over. It's now been two weeks since we finished the challenge and actually we haven't stopped working on the game pretty much on a daily basis. So let's look at what happened since then. We added a little animation when you pick up an item from the double item room. We gave torches and bushes a hit animation. And you can now extinguish torches too. We have a pause screen now and there you can hover every stat and get a little judgment text depending on how good you are in that stat. We gave each character a unique dash cooldown indicator and worked on the dash animations. We also added a cooldown indicator for your spell, an elemental orb next to your character. Then we replaced the casting animation of the enemies. It now looks much more like a magic shield. So that's it for now. The demo is not that far away anymore. We can really recommend trying out this challenge. It's also a great way to document the process, get feedback and interact with the game dev community. If you think the game looks interesting, it would be really awesome if you'd wishlist it on Steam so you get notified when we launch the demo.